Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the first and the largest virtual showcase and community activation of high impact innovation and technology in Yogyakarta. Welcome back to the InnoX Jogja Day 2, organized by Block 71 Yogyakarta in partner with NUS Enterprise and Innovation Factory. My name is Rizky Ramadan. I am the community manager of Block 71 Bandung, and I'll be your host for today and until the next few days. All right. Thanks again for all the viewers. Before we start, I would like to thank you to all of our partners, the Jogjakarta Startup Incubators, Jogja Digital Valley, D Jogja Digital Valley, Dilo Jogja, Centrino Ukadewe, PC Paul Ugem Creative Hub, Ibisma UEE, Amicom Business Park, Startup Incubator ABP and Innovative Academy, and our government partner, Dinas Komunikasi dan Informatika Daerah Istimewa Jogjakarta. Our official partners, AWS, Ruang Kerja and Skill Academy by Ruang Guru, and also our sporting partners, Bukit Asam, Certifa, Niaga Hoster, and GM Production. And of course, to our sponsor, TINC from Telkom Cell. Ladies and gentlemen, in this first session, it's my honor to be the moderator for this panelist that already here, that are already ready to share with all of you. Please welcome it right now is Andy Cristianto, the VP Corporate Strategy of Telkom Cell and CEO of TMI. Eko Seno Prianto, GM of Business Incubation Telkom Cell or Head of Telkom Cell Innovation Center TINC, Albertus Gian, Founder and CEO of Beehive Drones, and Dr. Mark Lim, the Program Director of Pier 71. Before, uh, with the title of this panel session is The Mythbuster, The Marriage of Startup and Corporate Innovators. Before we start this panel session, we will play first the video from our sponsor, and this session, ladies and gentlemen, is brought to you by TINC Telkom Cell. Hai para innovators Indonesia. Sebelum kita beranjak lebih jauh, apa sih harapan terbesar agar inovasi kalian dapat terakselerasi di market? Support akses ke market, sales channel, fasilitas pendukung inkubasi, seperti lab, cloud server, dan perangkat? Apakah kalian salah satu dari para innovator yang memiliki harapan tersebut? Introducing Telkomsel Innovation Center, incubation dan acceleration program dari Telkomsel, di mana Ting memberikan pembinaan, fasilitas inkubasi dan akselerasi untuk solusi-solusi digital seperti Internet of Things, Artificial Intelligence, Machine Learning, Medical Technology, 5G Technology dan berbagai solusi lainnya. Ting mengumpulkan dan mengakomodasi inovasi melalui kolaborasi dengan inovator lokal untuk bersama dengan kami menciptakan solusi inovatif yang siap untuk maju komersial ke market retail dan bisnis. Ting berkolaborasi dengan para startup dengan tim yang solid dan berpengalaman. Mulai dari tahap early stage hingga kalian yang sedang dalam tahap akselerasi. Lalu tahapan apa saja sih yang ada di dalam program Ting? Ada dua tahapan innovation journey dalam program Ting, yaitu incubation dan acceleration. Yang perlu diketahui, Ting akan mengkaji tingkatan maturitas solusi kamu. Apakah mulai dari incubation stage atau langsung ke tahap akselerasi? Pada setiap tahapan ini, teman inovator akan diberikan pembekalan mentorship dan monthly bootcamp dengan materi yang siap membantu kamu untuk melalui proses yang dilewati. Jika tim kamu memulai journey di tahap inkubasi, maka tahapan pertama adalah prototyping. Setelah itu, para inovator siap masuk ke tahap proof of concept. Setelah lolos di tahap inkubasi, waktunya kamu melesat ke akselerasi. Dimulai dari tahap piloting. Dan setelah masa piloting selesai, Inilah saat yang dinanti-nanti untuk bisa ready for commercial. Penasaran apa saja sih perbedaan value berkolaborasi dengan Ting yang tentunya kesempatan ini nggak akan mungkin dilewatkan. Ting memberikan value general seperti bootcamp dan workshop, pendanaan, co-working space, mentor bisnis dan technical, akses investor. Hanya itu saja, tentu tidak. Ini saatnya kamu tahu keunikan dari program Ting. Market akses ke lebih dari jutaan pelanggan retail dan ribuan pelanggan korporat Telkomsel. Sales channel yang siap mensupport solusi untuk dikenal ke market dan yang gak kalah keren, Innovation Lab. Seperti Testing Lab, 
sandboxing platform, dan development kits yang siap membantu kalian pada proses inkubasi. Bagaimana? Semakin siap berkolaborasi bersama kami? Hingga saat ini, Ting sudah menghasilkan inovasi di berbagai bidang, seperti Smart Environment, Agritech, dan Smart Industrial, dan berbagai area lainnya. Dan Ting akan terus memperluas garapan solusinya ke berbagai area digital solution lainnya. So, tunggu apa lagi? Ayo gabung bersama Ting untuk jadi bagian dari perjalanan inovasi dan akselerasikan solusimu lebih besar lagi bersama Telkomsel. Ayo daftarkan solusi kerenmu di ting.id. Dan jangan lupa follow untuk pantau update kami di sosial media. Telkomsel Innovation Center Good morning, everyone. Good morning, gentlemen. Thank you for attending this panel session. Again, I'm very happy and honored to be the moderator of this panel session. Uh, I think before we start the panel session, right, in Indonesia, there's a sentence that's saying, if uh, it means if you don't know each of one of us, you can, you, we will not know what what the things that we do and what things that we are doing for the world and of course for Indonesia, right? So it will be happy for me uh, to ask for every panel to introduce themselves and also telling a bit what the things that you do and what the things that probably well, you will, will do over in the future. So uh, for this one, I'll be starting with uh, Pa Andi. Pa Andi, welcome to the session of the InnoX Jogja. Probably you can introduce yourself first and what you do for TINC, Pa. Hi, uh, thank you, Mas Iki. Hey, hi, everybody, uh, panelists, and also the audience. My name is Andy Cristianto. I'm the Vice President of Corporate Strategy in Telkomsel. So I'm uh, looking after the long-term strategy and uh, bridging with the short-term uh, action with Telkomsel. Also, I'm the founder of Think. So we found Think about three years ago. The initial of incubation in Telkomsel start like 11, 12 years ago. Together, uh, it's initially from the internal. But I think in the last uh, three, four years, we are moving um, uh, to engage with the external innovators as well. Uh, as of now, I'm also the CEO of the TMI, Telkomsel Mitra Innovasi. So TMI is the corporate venture of uh, Telkomsel. So we have a, a $40 million uh, fund to uh, invest in the startups that have a strong correlation with Telkomsel. So that's a short button. Thank you, Masiki. All right. Thank you very much, Pa Andy. Wow, already mentioned it. They already ventures. They already have the fun. All right, startups. You need to be excited in this panel session. But it's of course it's not complete because in here, Pa Andy is not being himself, but also accompanied by the GM of the TINC. So please, Marcelo, probably you can introduce yourself and what the TINC do and what did you do for the Tosh startups? Sure. Hi, Ma Masiki. Thank you. Uh, hi everyone, uh, good morning. Uh, allow me to introduce myself. So my name is Eko Seno, you can call me Seno. I am currently, uh, my current role is as the GM of Business Incubation and Telkomsel, where I lead the Telkomsel Innovation Center or Think program, which is the corporate accelerator program for Telkomsel. Um, I actually report to Pak Andi here, and I have been with the team for uh, one year now. And before uh, this uh, role, I was uh, the GM of IoT New Business Development at Telkomsel for about two and a half years. And during that time, I actually uh, initiated the industrial IoT uh, new business vertical for Telkomsel. Thank you. Wow, thank you very much, Marcelo, yeah. for the introduction. It will be complete all the story of the TNC, but we will get dig deeper, of course, in this panel session. And for the next panel, uh, please, uh, in my Albert from the Be uh, Beehive Drones, can you introduce yourself? Uh, you're still in the mute, Mas uh, Albert. I'm really sorry. Hi, good morning, everybody. And good morning, Pak Andi and Pak Seno and Mr. Mark, and of course, the moderators. So my name is Albert. I am a founder and CEO of Beehive Drones. So Beehive Drone is a company that uh, provides a swarm drones, autonomous uh, drones. And to redefine the possibilities, basically, and I am in here because of Faseno and Pandi. Thank you very much because Beehive Drone and one of the subsidiary company work together with the MINT and C. 
to of course help people and redefining the possibilities again thank you very much thank you very much Master albert what a really really grateful thought and a really great of being inside of the tinc it means right uh, okay for the last panel but not least of course please welcome dr mark lin from the, the program director of mark uh, peer 71 please dr mark yeah uh, good morning everybody and um panelists yeah um i uh, this is Mark. Uh, I work for the National University of Singapore. And uh, so we are, we are not really, I mean, we, we are, as our primary function is education. So we are very much in uh, university education. Now, in my department, uh, what we do is uh, entrepreneurship training. Uh, and, and that is not easy because uh, you can train science, you can train uh, literature and so forth. But to train entrepreneurship is never easy. And I, I must say, uh, uh, on that ground, uh, the National U University of Singapore, which are in short, uh, NUS, we are relatively quite advanced uh, in such training. So um, uh, many years back, we, uh, the university set up this um, startup. Um, we are quite uh, so-called uh, forefront in uh, setting up a startup ecosystem. And we put our students uh, into a startup community to learn uh, because uh, we recognize that startup um, kind of uh, represent entrepreneurship. Yeah, so that, that's how we, we do. And uh, we currently, um, uh, we're quite advanced uh, in that. And we, we, we are not just uh, setting up, um, uh, building out the network, uh, startup network in Singapore, but also to the region. And, and we're expanding this region reach. Right. So personally, uh, I uh, in NUS and in my uh, department, which is called NUS Enterprise, I look after corporate partnership. And because we, we recognize uh, corporates as one of the critical uh, elements uh, in this uh, in entrepreneurship and in engaging the startup and in also entrepreneurship uh, training. So uh, so I, um, I look after that. And concurrently, uh, as what... Uh, uh, Risky uh, mentioned, I'm also program director for this program called Peer 71. Now, Peer stands for Ports Innovation Ecosystem Reimagined at Block 71. Now, this is a collaboration with the Marine Port Authority of Singapore. And the objective is to bring innovation into, into the marine time industry in Singapore. So you can imagine it's an industry-wide kind of a transformation. Um, and we're using startup as a proxy uh, for entrepreneur to bring innovation into the maritime industry. Yeah, so uh, that's a quick introduction about myself. Yeah. All right, thank you very much, Mark. You know what, the one that I am just realized, uh, I'd be, I'm very, very honored with you guys because can you imagine there's already corporates and then also uh, universities of education like NUS, and then there's also the startups that actually can connect straight away and can be do a, some a good correct, great collaboration in the future you know because like mark said one of the program of the peer 71 as the maritime right and i saw uh, albert from the beehive uh, from drones that probably can connect through his uh, startup uh, innovation of the drones and then there's tinc as the corporate that probably this one is can be connect all together and make, make one of a great collaboration Wow, I'm very honored. Again, thank you very much, uh, gentlemen, to uh, come in here in the session. Okay, let's start this session. Um, to, to myself, right, uh, my personal opinion, I cannot wait for the session, you know, because I want to hear and I want to dig deeper, uh, especially as like our title said, it's a myth buster uh, between the marriage, between the startups and also the, the corporate innovators. In my first question, this one I lead it to uh, Andy, I guess, because I want to hear from you first, but Andy, uh, how is the corporate incubator or innovation arms uh, different from the normal uh, incubator or accelerator? Uh, what do you think about this, but Andy? Yeah, uh, thank you, Masiki. So okay, maybe let's start from what's what's similar, right? What's I think what's mm, the mm. similar is I think uh, we have the same to growth the startups. I think I think hmm. this is uh, the similar. Maybe the slight different is uh, sometimes become very different. Is actually the motive behind it, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. for the uh, normal accelerator, usually what they have uh, the asset they uh, leverage is actually their network, uh, their experience. Some extent, 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 some
back like maybe 10 10 10 10 in Indonesian context ya yeah. corporate tend to develop everything by ourselves but i think in the last five years we realized that i mean not i mean not not any innovation can be done in house is very mm-hmm. challenging in many ways right so we have to find uh, the partners right so that's that's the motive um, and what the the corporate usually has i'm just giving example telkomsel right So we have 170 million of uh, subscribers. Just to mm-hmm. give a context, right? We Telkomsel is only second after BPGS uh, to reach out to Indonesian population. So Indonesian population about 260, almost 270 million now. Uh, BPGS is around 225 million. Telkomsel is 170 million. So if you want to go across Indonesia. Uh, beyond that's just the the biggest six or 20 cities that uh, most people know. Telkomsel has reached to the 520 cities all over Indonesia, from the first tier until maybe fifth or sixth tiers of the cities, right? So I think that uh, uh, assets is uh, 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 the corporate need to leverage. Of course, mm-hmm. every corporate have their uh, different assets to offer, right? Um, mm-hmm. um, and they really want to to innovate uh, to leverage uh, the assets that they have. So, so I think that's that, that's in short, Masiki. So I think. To, to 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 conclude okay, the, the, the similar is i think we want to engage with innovators to innovate because we realize that we cannot innovate by ourselves just, hmm. just just that's the realization um but the the access to leverage is different and the common uh, 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 accelerators is uh, around the network funding for sure and uh, hmm. all the assets that they have Maybe to uh, Dr. Mark, for example, in uh, education institution, there's a lot of uh, experience around uh, um, uh, uh, education and how to bridge, for example, the, uh, the the education institution to the industrial, right? That's that's not an easy. I know that's uh, difficult. I work with the education institution in Indonesia, and that's not easy. Easier said than done. And the, for corporate like Telkomsel, that's the asset that Telkomsel has uh, ready to, to 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 collaborate to innovate. Thank okay. you. All right. Wow. This is one of a big announcement, right? So Telkom Cell is opening themselves to say that we cannot innovate by ourselves, but we need the partners. We need all the startups to collaborate with the, with the, the Telkom Cell or the corporates. But uh, Mark, I, I want to hear from your side. Uh, as you, as the program director of PR71, like you told us before, right? It means there's a, several of the big corporates and also industries that are actually collaborating, especially in maritime in Singapore, uh, to collaborate with Block 71 and hopefully also to aiming what probably it seems looks like what Pak Andi says, right? Want to have the innovation and everything and gather together, not only to get the network and the exploitation, but also the access of the, uh, the corporates have, right? What happened in your side? I mean, in in the side of the NUS enterprise, doing this uh, using the PR seventy one with the maritime. What do you see? What do you see on this side? Uh, okay, uh, of course, uh, from NUS perspective, <clears throat> we are very neutral. Yeah, but uh, so just uh, looking at your question, uh, uh, mm-hmm. the difference between the the so called the corporate uh, innovator, yes, uh, and uh, so called the accelerator, um, um, yeah. I think uh, both are very different, um, uh, primarily because the objective uh, of engaging the startup are different. Uh. For the accelerator, um, they actually derive derive benefit uh, from their so-called engagement with the startup. Meaning, uh, yeah, they put a, they they spot those uh, promising one, they put the investment there, and they actually benefit from that investment. Hmm. Whereas for corporate, it's very different. Um, they are looking for um, uh, corporate innovation, and that uh, come in a few form. Uh, so corporate probably in the current system, they have uh, some need for innovation, need to revise their process and uh, so forth. Or when, or if they are developing a new product, they need need new technology. Mm-hmm. So when they engage the startup, um, um, they either at the end the startup uh, become acquired by them, or become a joint partnership, uh, joint venture kind of uh, uh, outcome. If not, they bec- the startup become the supplier uh, to mm-hmm. the to the corporates. Yeah. So mm-hmm. the the end outcome is very different, and because of that that different differences. Uh, the risk or the 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 so called the, the way of engaging is also quite different because uh, what the corporates want from the startup uh, is is not so much about uh, um, what how much money the startup can make, uh, but rather the technology, the people, and so forth. Yeah, 
So uh, to answer your question, uh, uh, what do we see? Yeah, this is what we see. And from NUS angle, um, 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 uh, uh, what role do we play? Uh, yeah, we, we, we try to uh, meet uh, different party interests. And uh, of course, at the end to us is uh, entrepreneurship. We want to, we want to so-called promote uh, and stir up uh, uh, entrepreneurship for all these uh, different relationships. I see. Okay. But Andy, uh, this makes me uh, make another question that I, I know it's uh, I'm, uh, because it's, it's very interesting when Mark said that the, the corporate innovator or the corporate accelerator or incubator is actually have a, uh, a different thing, you know, so, uh, like that. Then when you said before, you said it's actually have the same thing, but all similar things, but also have a different, uh, probably uh, engaging the, the one, uh, the, the, the startup is like a different way. But the one that I want to ask to you is, and this one is like Mark said, um, basically the, the, the corporate aiming a different uh, results or different uh, uh, point that want to get from the the startups, right? Uh, is that the one that happened actually also in the TINC or in Telkom Cell? Yes, yeah. Uh, like uh, I think I am uh, to to echo what uh, uh, Mark says earlier, right? Mm. So mm. Uh, uh, Telkom Cell, for example, I'm I'm just uh, giving ex uh, Telkom Cell context, yeah, right? Sure. We've been like uh, 25 years. We are growing as a telecommunication B 2 C. Mm. Uh, uh, mainly services, right? So um, uh, going toward B two B is uh, also something relatively new for Telkomsel, right? I see. But we've I see. Uh, grown that with the with the assets that we have, the B two C. So we are going toward the B two B. But in the B two B, the 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 problem to solve is so many, right? I mean, connectivity is always the underlying. But on top of mm. connectivity, there's a lot of uh, problem to solve. And it's impossible for us to uh, tackle all the problems from, I mean, in, in every vertical and in each vertical, they have their own value chain. In each of the value chain, there's problem to solve, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, 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 that's why we um, realize that we have to engage as many innovators out there as possible. So, uh, uh, but it's also important to realize, so uh, again, from Telkom Sales point of view, what we have, and what we aspire to, to, to have moving forward. And mm -hmm. uh, so then we can find uh, or, or, or select uh, uh, in which area that we are going to focus because it's impossible to, 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 to lead everything. Because there's the common mistakes that are done by mm -hmm. Telco. Like, because Telco is like, I mean, because I have connectivity everywhere. So I mean, <laughs> uh, I'm just uh, seeing everybody as vendors, for example. So that's the mindset <laughs> that we have like 10, 20 years ago. Um, but but now it's 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 it's, it's uh, move lah. It's more like a, a, a collaboration uh, mentalities. Yeah. All right. Wow. It's a great to hear that for that one. But of course, I really want to know uh, as Maseno is the is the head right from doing that all this TINC things on the incubation of the telecom so thing. Maseno, uh, this will be the question: Why should startups turn to the corporate incubation, Maseno? What do you think as the person behind all the technicals and everything and then uh, gaining with the startup and then you know all that networking what do you think about it why the startup needs to uh, turn on into the corporate uh, in incubators yeah sure okay thank you masiki for the question i think i think this raises a very important uh, uh, question especially for the startups right who wants to mm. uh, um, especially for those ones that are in the early stages Mm -hmm. um, let's be honest. Uh, uh, again, like, like uh, this is going to sound similar to pa what pa Andy just said. Uh, corporations uh, need startups. Uh, why do we want? Why do we need startups? Because uh, we we want to get the that you know innovation culture that exists in in startups. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to get the digital talents. We want to you know uh, to get the external capabilities of such uh, aspiring founders and teams of of startups. And usually startups are the ones who are in the forefront of, you know, uh, new technologies, new emerging technologies, right? So that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's from, from a corporate's uh, perspective. And, uh, and, but however, in, on, the, on the other side, uh, we, we, we also see that I think uh, startups also needs corporates, especially the, those the ones that are in the early stages, the ones that are, uh, you know, first time or maybe uh, uh, initial founders, uh, they, they need uh, they can leverage, you know, uh, corporate resources. Uh, corporations have market access. 
uh, we have also digital ecosystem that already established uh, within telecom cell. And therefore, I think uh, uh, what we, we, I guess my point is that uh, why startups should join incubators or corporate incubators in this case is because we want to get the best of the two worlds, right? The worlds mm -hmm. of corporations and the worlds of uh, startups. So I think I think that's that's uh, the general uh, idea of why why I think uh, startups should join uh, such programs. Thanks. Oh, okay. All right. I need to redline that you say that that the startups needs the corporate incubators. In this in this in this uh, sentence, right? In this, uh, what you say, I need to ask it to Mas Albert. Of course, Mas Albert, as the CEO and the co-founder of the Beehive Drones, you are also one of a part of the startup that actually joining the TINC program, right? I really want to know from your side why that you, in the end, you turn up into the, the TINC program. Okay, so thank you very much. Um, so speaking directly from a Beehive Drone side in this case, mm. because there are a lot of uh, reasons also from other companies or startups. Uh, we see like, if we have the fitness of the vision in this case, like we can strengthening the business profit, uh, business process from each other. So what Beehive Drones do, what Beehive Drone want to do in the future and what Telkom Cell are looking for and what Telkom Cell in this case, TNC uh, or TMI want to do in the future as well if we can find the fitness on those two uh, purposes, so we we can strengthen each other. That's one of the reasons. And the other, of course, I think there are some, uh, there are some uh, idea that we can get the access from, of the funding from the corporate also incubator, mm. which is until this, it is still the common, common perception. Yeah. But again, uh, for us in Beehive Drone, we still we are looking for the fitness of the vision, how we can strengthen each other. Also, in the future, when we open a new market, let's say because like Paseno already stated earlier, uh, startup is uh, in the most cases are working on the front line, like they are the spearheaded to open a new market. So mm -hmm. in that case, when there are new open the new market being opened, so this kind of startup or maybe in this case behind they're also looking for a backup form i see like the big brothers which mm. is a corporate like the incumbent and the last one i think also from the credibility both point of side point of view which is mm -hmm. we can state that we are working together partner with telecom cell like pa andy already said is one of the biggest telco companies in, in indonesia which is also bring us some Wow, effect. Okay, wow, it's cool. Your company mm -hmm. working with the biggest um, corp, uh, telecommunication company in the country, and of course, speaking about the biggest, we also looking for the access to the customer or to the mm -hmm. client of telecom cell, which is in this case also will develop the company further. That is strictly speaking from the high drone side, and I don't know if there are another reason. From another companies, but of course, I believe there are a lot of other reasons from startups. So Join. definitely, the 170 million of the users, right, the one that probably can attract you, and also what you aim together with the block, uh, with the TINC, right? Yeah. <laughs> you, you tell me, Iki. You tell me, <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, definitely. But here again, uh, Mark, as I know, right, and US also has actually uh, has a multiple corporate innovation programs. Uh, may I know what it does it actually takes to make the program is actually to be successful, you know, like uh, what is the one that make it succeed, right? And also, I want to know from you, what do you think, why these large companies such as like Telcom Cell are look, looking for the startups? You know? What do you think about this? Okay, yeah. Um, uh, why corporates uh, look for startups, is it? Yeah. Mm. Uh, you see, for corporates uh, to, to have innovation, uh, mm -hmm. Typically, uh, there are three ways. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. the most straightforward and the traditional one is the the corporates uh, conduct R and D. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, this is becoming more and more expensive, uh, uh, especially technology change fast. Uh, so you have a whole bunch of researchers. Uh, so uh, when 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 the domain area change, uh, it become uh, quite a liability to the mm -hmm. corporates. So most corporates uh, increasingly turns to uh, open innovation, working with government, working with uh, so-called uh, open source uh, to, to, to advance their R&D needs. Yeah. So R&D is one area. 
The other area is by uh, merger and acquisition. So any company uh, um, so-called successful and um, uh, and if a corporates have got certain products, a uh, roof map, product plan uh, that they need, uh, they, I mean, it's too much a hassle to start a brand new, uh, start from scratch, uh, R&D from scratch. So of course, the easy way is look for a company uh, and, and buy them over. So, uh, so therefore you see a lot of merger kind of stuff, yeah? Uh, in some industry. So the third area is, of course, uh, what we are discussing today. Uh, that is to engage the startup community. Uh, and actually, that is one of the, the uh, so-called less risk, uh, the, the lowest risk uh, way to acquire uh, uh, innovation because you don't need to commit a, a lot of uh, financial resource mm -hmm. or manpower resource. Uh, you just need to be uh, a bit more so-called resourceful in terms of um, able to scan the whole um, uh, international landscape. Uh, you get the relevant uh, startup, know what they are doing, know what the, the industry roughly uh, is moving into. Uh, then you get the sense uh, what uh, uh, where the where the future is. Yeah. So yeah, to answer your question, why why corporates interested with startup? Uh, I think. Uh, uh, to fulfill their innovation needs, and this is relatively a uh, more more efficient way, without having to commit big resources up front. It's more efficient way uh, to 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 find out uh, what is the landscape about. Yeah. So of course, uh, important is to get a right partner. So this partner must have a good network. So you can uh, through that network you effectively uh, reach out to the world, effectively scan the whole landscape, and and you get the right information highlighted the get the right partner. But again, Mark, I, I, I really want to know, like, like I, I said before, MUS already have some multiple innov corporate innovation programs, right? Um, can you share it to us, like how to, uh, what the one that actually makes succeed, like success of the program, you know? Can you share it to us, like from your side, from MUS? Okay, uh, there, are, there are multiple factors actually. Mm. Um, I think, but I think the most important uh, for all this corporate innovation program to work is the commitment of the, the corporate themselves. The corporate must be serious uh, because if there, there are some innovation program, the corporates just want to know what's happening out there. Okay, uh, and there's no, no further plan to engage the startup and so forth. Now, after a while, people will, will, will find out and uh, people will know. Uh, so uh, the the interest level from the startup is also very will also be very low, yeah. But okay. there are companies who, who are very serious. Uh, when you get the startup, they have further plan, all right. Uh, so and you will get for the kind of uh, commitment. Uh, uh, once the reputation is built, established, uh, startup will take it uh, very seriously, yeah. And so, what kind of commitment is needed uh, from the from the uh, corporates now? Um, market access is one important thing. I think somebody mentioned that before, and uh, yeah, quite not and market access. Now, market access uh, to a large extent also mean adoption, adop uh, adoption opportunity by the corporates. Yeah. So corporates are very established. They have the market, they have the brand name already. So they actually hold the market. So, so for the startup to come in, uh, even if it's the same product or, or just pick in a certain portion, for the startup to start everything all over is very tough. Yeah. So if you can write on the brand name of the corporates, actually that's very good. Yeah. So it becomes mm -hmm. a win-win situation. So even, even the, the startup cannot find cannot gain market access uh, through the corporates, but at least if the corporate was to shoulder everything and at the end, the startup uh, gain adoption opportunity, uh, meaning uh, become a supplier or, or, or some kind of joint development mm -hmm. and so forth. It is still very good. It's still very good for the startup, yeah. And uh, last but not least, there are certain industry, um, uh, the, the type of business tend to be B2B type. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. B2B kind of industry. Now, those B2B nature kind of work, it is very, very tough for the startup to get into those industries. And the startup need to recognize that. Yeah. If it is the B2B type, yes, uh, startup through some kind of like those Google, uh, Uber, uh, mm -hmm. or some kind of uh, food uh, um, administration and so forth, where you reach out directly to the, to the consumer, you have a chance to, to, to be big. 
But if there are certain industry tends to be uh, between uh, corporates and corporate booking business, and for the startup to come in between, it is extremely difficult. So unless there are some corporate willing to bring the startup in, uh, uh, bring them in, uh, brought in, I mean, give them adoption opportunity and so forth, then only the startup have a better chance. So uh, yeah, so to answer your question, uh, what makes some program more successful than others is precisely uh, whether the corporates have this big plan for the mm -hmm. startup. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Mark. Uh, this one, I, I'll, I'll be addressing back to Pa Andy. Pa Andy, it's very interesting what Mark said, right? That there's a need to be a really, uh, a, a big commitment from the the, 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 the corporates to, to, to put the, uh, the startups to have this uh, adopting the B2B concept over in the, uh, into the future and also how to get them growth under the, the corporate names, right? Uh, I really want to know from your side, uh, are that those are some problems that actually also you having it in MTINC and also Telkom Cell. And what, how do you do, uh, do you do actually taking off care of that thing side of the sites? Can you share it with us? Yeah, maybe uh, one thing in, in common that uh, not uh, every startup is aware, maybe aware mm -hmm. or not really uh, uh, working uh, toward that is actually uh, every corporate, the bigger the corporate, they have to defend their short-term targets, right? Mm. So be it revenue, be it net income, whatever. So they don't have uh, quite a wide uh, span of attention, right? Mm. Toward the, the, the new innovation sometimes. So uh, their, their short-term target is uh, uh, overshadowing the, 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 the longer term. I think that's, that's mm. uh, um, uh, the, it's happened everywhere, right? Even in yeah. the telecom cell, it's happened as well, right? Um, uh, uh, you, uh, yeah, yeah. It, it's not that uh, uh, the, the corporate don't want to innovate, but they want. But once the the, the short term target, oh, yeah, you don't meet your numbers, uh, and it's, it's still like a like five days, ten days, and then uh, you won't get the, the the attention. So I think that's the, the 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 maybe I'm a bit generalizing, but that's a common yeah. problem. So right. that's why the program like thing coming in. So because uh, we dedicated a program, the Commercial Innovation Center, uh, we have uh, the. the uh, the, the competent uh, people like uh, uh, Seno to head it, and we have the project bodies. And to uh, echo to Mark, uh, this, this is quite true, right? Because uh, for, for, for corporate, uh, uh, sometimes you don't realize it, but I think our, our name is make it easier to, to, to connect with the network, which is maybe this is quite challenging for the startups, right? For like, I mean, reach out to the big vendors or the big technology providers is for, maybe for telecom sales, it's like one call away, right? But for the startup, is from from which door to knock first, right? So that's that's a, also the challenge as well, right? So I think the, the one of the effort, I think we um, uh, uh, set up the uh, the the innovation units, uh, the incubation accelerators, with uh, doing uh, uh, to to segregate, like put it that way, to to make mm -hmm. it uh, clear, so make it easier for for the business unit to reach out and seek the innovation in the timely manner, so. When, for example, they have demo day or or or, or investment day, it's much easier to to for, for them to to manage their expectation. And the other way around, right? So for 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 startups, so they know, oh, okay, this is the the, the assets that Telkom Cell has. Uh, okay, we can uh, leverage that. Uh, be it the something directly inside Telkom Cell, like the business units or the network that Telkom Cell has, uh, that, or, or or partners like, for example, Telkom Cell has three hundred thousand outlets all across Indonesia, right? Not many people know that. We use it for the telco. Even we don't. Uh, sometimes we don't realize that beyond the telco uh, business, the three hundred thousand outlets is very um, uh, valuable for uh, most of the startups, right? So, so things like that, and also the networks and the the, the partners that they, we we have that uh, we can easily. Because sometimes our partners is also uh, um, look into innovation work uh, with telecom, so like. Uh, 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 um, uh, infrastructure provider or chipset manufacturers that uh, uh, work uh, closely with uh, us when they know that we have this innovation programs most of the time they are happy to to to, to sit to, to to talk to 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 speak and to discuss and to find a, a solution develop co-product things like that so hope that answers 
Mas Siki. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, of course. Uh, and actually, Pa Andi, I, I noticed from your face when Mark said that actually the R&D cost, cost is very big, right? <laughs> I saw your face is changing when Mark is actually saying that. And I think uh, I, I think that will be a great thing, something that probably in the future NUS and Tokopso can talk also. <laughs> But uh, he, I want to know also, Maseno, from like Pa Andi already said, right? You as the head, it means you are the fathers of the startups that inside of the PINC, right? In the meaning of this one, uh, from the question, right? What did you see actually as the uh, um, the, 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 pro, uh, the startups uh, doing the collaboration with you, especially in Talk of Cell, right? What is the, I mean, the challenges that you see actually from the side of you and also the, the startups? Yeah, of course. So, uh, I mean, uh, when we talk about challenges, right, uh, mm. to add to what uh, the pointers that Pandi just, just pointed out before, uh, we know that it's for a fact that uh, startups fail, right? Uh, startup yeah. fails, uh, and, and, and it's, it's, the rate is quite high uh, over the lifetime of startups. I think it's about 90% uh, globally. I don't know, in Indonesia, probably even higher, the rate of uh, failures for startups. And uh, this happens uh, majority in the first two years, I think, in the earlier stage of the startups. I think in the, in the first two years, startups uh, fails around at least, I think at least 35% uh, of startups uh, fails in the first two years. So that's, that's the challenge uh, with us here. Uh, uh, I think, I think uh, not just in Think, but any other you know, incubators and accelerators, they see the same uh, situation uh, uh, arises, right? Um, Uh, so and and the other thing is that being a corporate accelerator, uh, we don't really have the luxury. To, and speaking about commitment, right? Uh, uh, part of the commitment, we our program must be very highly selective, meaning that we only select a short list of startups on each of our batch or our, our cohorts. Uh, on average, we only onboard like five startups on each of our cohorts. Uh, uh, so so the number is not quite high, and we've only run like five uh, cohorts in the last uh, two and a half years or three years. Uh, so, so it's only we only have about 26 uh, uh, startups portfolios that has joined our programs. So it's it's becoming it's becoming more challenging. Uh, we already set a high standard uh, uh, when we do the selection process and we do the sourcing process. It's part of the curation process. We want to make sure that uh, the startup fits uh, our our uh, strategic initiatives, especially in becoming a digital telco or a digital uh, business initiative within Telkomsel. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, that's that's part of the process, and then afterwards, uh, uh, it's again uh, uh, not all will reach the end of the program. Uh, our program is a very you know a very a discipline. Uh, we have a very disciplined framework, so we have four stages: uh, in, incubation, and acceleration, starting from prototyping, POC, piloting, and also commercial or pre-commercial uh, stage. So uh, well, on each those of those stages, we evaluate uh, these startups. And uh, we don't want to, as much as we love uh, these startups to grow, but if the, the target or the metrics uh, uh, didn't deliver uh, and, and we see that it is not justified to, to go on to the next stages, we're, we're not going to push forward uh, 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 these uh, startups. So that's part of our, our you know, you know uh, uh, we want to, Uh, discipline process in our program. Now that's 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 the challenging part. But but that but the, uh, on the other side, that's the part that we want to be committed, right? Uh, we want to be committed. Uh, we want to see success. And for those new uh, startups that have uh, successfully reached the commercial stages, uh, it's still only the first two years, right? Only the first yeah. uh, the first one year. There's still a long way to go. Uh, usually, a journey of startups uh, will reach. Um, uh, uh, beyond 10 years, uh, I guess, before they really exit, exit it. So, so that's part of the challenges in Telkom Cell. And startup business is a long-term game, uh, right? Mm. So, so when we talk about results, when we talk about uh, 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 returns, it's a long-term game. Therefore, in Telkom Cell, uh, part of our corporate innovation programs, we have uh, not just Thing, actually, we have several other corporate innovation programs. Uh, we uh, think is focusing more a lot on the incubation and also the business commercialization and acceleration. We do have NextDev who is focusing more on the earlier stages, uh, engaging all the startup communities. And we have TMI, uh, which Pa Andi is, is uh, the CEO, which is focusing on the investment side. So it's, it's more on the venture arm side of Telkom Cell. So we want to tap on, on those uh, different stages and, and uh, value chains of, of the startup 
uh, life, right? So that's part of the commitment that we are trying to do. But yes, there are some challenges and it's a long-term game. Thanks. Long-term game. I will, I will red line of that, right? Because I want to ask straight away to the startups, actually, Mas Albert. Uh, so I really want to know, you know, some common misception is that the startup that joining the corporate incubation incubators, right? Uh, they actually have a fears that they will be limited by the big brothers or the mm -hmm. corporate side on the side. What do you think about this? What do you feel? Are you feeling that when you are joining the TINC or you say, hmm, I don't know, that's what we want to hear about it. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, like uh, earlier, it has been mentioned that join a corporate uh, incubation or a corporate acceleration program. Mm -hmm. It means for the startup also to, you know, think about what they can give also to the corporate to, in this case, big brothers. So mm -hmm. I will just give an example to make it easier from our mm -hmm. side in Beehive Drone. Like Beehive Drone by nature is profitable company already. And then yes. we were thinking about how if we are making a new product that can reach more market, which is in this case also develop the company. And then we are looking like Pa Seno just mentioned, it is a long-term strategy. So what can we do in the most efficient manner, what in the most efficient way? And then we are looking for, okay, let's find some program that will amplify the fish, the mission in this case. So then we look for the ANC, and in this case we see like, okay, this is one of the main, um, in this uh, the main vendors or or also the main technology that we need to acquire to make this to make this product successful. So and then we join the program. Of course, uh, there are no other way besides doing from the competition. We try to strive on the competition. Uh, and then there's an elimination from another startups and then we make it until here. So, mm -hmm. and of course, thank you for choosing us. And in this case, then uh, we have drone success to have uh, to make to the step one, which is to, you know, acquire the necessary uh, resources for us to make this uh, product happen. And also this is by the end of the day, still like a business deal, right? It should be win-win mm -hmm. solution for both of, mm -hmm. uh, for both of the, uh, stakeholders in this case, let's say Beehive Drone and Telkom. So, so mm. there are always a fear about uh, fission realignment and how the company will be changes will be changed, and also there will be a, a how how far these big brothers will also contribute or in our decision. And that case, mm. that, that's why. Uh, for my side, we always try to say in the in the in the in the front, like I put the cards in the front and then say this is uh, this is what we want, this is what we need, this is what what we can give you, and this is what we expected from you, and we respect that. In the, so, like Paseno said, there are two commitment in two in two sides. It is not always the startup uh, need the corporate uh, incubation or acceleration, but also the corporate need us in this case to open a new market and they see it that's why they are choosing us right mm -hmm. so uh that's why in beehive drone if we want to do it uh in profitable way then we join this kind of program and also if we want to do it in research way because beehive drone by nature is research and development company and we mm -hmm. are we are making new company for tech home cell like the one that focus on on profitable side mm -hmm. So if you if, if we want to do it in the research and development manners, then we are we do we sign MOU with the universities. I'm I'm quite happy with Mr. Mark in here from NUS. I have a chance to work with actually NUS students during early phase development when we were in the UK. So they are always very you know uh, dependable and I I mean they are a good students sir. So yeah, you should be <laughs> proud of them. And yes. Um, that's why, uh, again, for us, it's always open communication. We always do it also in another business deal. This is just a business deal. By the end of the day, we got some, we, we lose some, we take some, and we give some. So that is from here. So always, always uh, meet the target uh, from both sides and always stay commit, have a high commit on this kind of a deal. All right. All right. Well, thanks, Albert, for your insight and for your sharing the experience with us. All right. But Mark, uh, hearing from Albert, right? Uh, like, I, uh, like I know that actually 
uh, we in NUS we have uh, several of the corporate uh, programs, right? Uh, that I want to know uh, what it's actually uh, they ask to to you, especially in NUS, right? To make this that the startup uh, can ally and then uh, you know uh, can ally and then will be applying to the programs. What is the one that you do uh, as a NUS uh, to to make the startups actually wants to join with the corporate programs? How to make them don't have no fears, you know? Because, like I said, there's a misconception that actually they have fear about this limited by the big corporates, right? But Albert said that you no, know, as as long as in the end it will be meet up in the in the middle and fulfill all the needs. And then, as you as from NUS, that we the one that are you the one that running with all the programs from the corporates. What do you do for the startup for them to make and at the end, and in the end they get in into the program? Okay. Uh, to be to be frank, uh, I'm not too mm -hmm. sure whether we have the answer for that. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's okay. <laughs> I just want but, to ask uh, you. But the, the things that we have observed and the things that at least we can do uh, as a neutral party uh, is to make an uh, objective assessment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I mentioned earlier on uh, uh, the number one success factors for this corporate uh, innovation program is the corporate themselves actually. So in that sense, uh, for NUS, we pick the corporate partner that we want to, that we think uh, worthwhile for us to so-called contribute our efforts. Yeah? So the, the corporates must have the aspiration, the ambition to, to engage the startup with a serious uh, uh, objective. Yeah? Ambitions objective, that is to engage them for real business purpose. Mm -hmm. Now that's number one criteria. So given that that is met, all right, of course, we have a very good uh, um, um, startup network. We can reach out to, to the startup. But another uh, other factors like uh, um, like what you mentioned, fear. All right, uh, now fear for the startup. Now, why is there such a fear? Uh, because um, the corporates uh, engage the startup with a slightly different objective. Uh, they want the startup uh, for the technology, for their talent, and so forth. So in that sense, the IP ownership sometimes become an issue. Yeah, uh, some mm. some corporates uh, when they uh, inquire the startup before anything move further. It, at the point of a so-called engagement, they, they want to have certain portion, certain share of the startup IP. Uh, that is very scary to the startup. Uh, mm -hmm. So in fact, uh, as a neutral party, uh, we will have to advise uh, uh, the fact uh, from the angle. Uh, if you have own any uh, IP, it is not fair for another party to take the IP uh, from you. Yeah? But if you do jointly develop something new, and then that is fair. Uh, it's only right that both party, uh, both, both party that contribute to the IP jointly own the IP. Yeah. So so actually that is not towards um, not to say bias towards startup or the corporate. Most corporate have their IP also, start up their IP. So we call that background IP. So background IP, we should never touch. Huh? We should respect that. But mm. if two parties come together and create something new, then they should have a proper agreement to recognize the background IP and then uh, and then uh, clearly state what happened when they uh, co-developed the new so-called foreground IP. Yeah. So that mm. uh, given given that that issue, both party can uh, can can agree to that, I think that remove a big part of fear from the startup, yeah? So they don't have to worry that after I work with you, oh, you take my IP and just go, go away and so forth. They can actually have an agreement to base on if, if there is evidence that the, the corporates actually take the startup IP and develop something new without, uh, without recognizing the startup. The startup can actually have that agreement uh, to raise legal case uh, against the corporates. Huh? That is one thing. Uh, the other thing is uh, the, the, the so-called the share, the share from the startup. Mm -hmm. But that, that applies not just a uh, corporate uh, innovator, uh, also uh, it applied to the, those uh, uh, general accelerators. So when a, a certain program, the accelerator will want to take a certain share and so forth. Yeah. Uh, for that, we can only advise the startup now. Uh, don't be too desperate for the money, all right? Look carefully. Uh, look carefully at what value does the so-called accelerator, whether it be corporates or, or a so-called a pure, uh, hundred percent accelerator. Uh, look at what value they can contribute to you before you decide uh, what 
what uh, share to give out. Yeah, because for as a startup, uh, especially those very fresh startup, uh, since they have nothing to lose, uh, they thought ah just just give it in. But actually not true. Uh, yeah, there, because there are some people who can smell business better than others. So uh, startups mm-hmm. should not do uh, uh, so called uh, undermine uh, the value that they can they can contribute. So yeah, to, so to and, and this is not in, in within the university con- control. Uh, so mm-hmm. we can only uh, play neutral party to advise the startup and also to advise the corporates. Uh, that uh, if you want a startup, a good startup to come to your program, you you have to have that kind of a uh, image, uh, or or people perceive that you have that kind of a uh, professionalism, uh, and and then they 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 are they're happy to work with you and and only. By removing that kind of fear, I think we, you can expect something more impactful uh, to come up from the collaboration. Yeah? yeah. Wow, thank you very much, Mark. I saw Pa Andy, Maseno, and also Albert. It's like, I think they're taking all the notes that you said. You know, it's, I think it's really great insight for all of us, right? But it, uh, it's really interesting. Uh, that's why I want to continue with, with Pa Andy. Pa Andy, then my next question is actually when it comes to funding, right? Um, uh, do are the startups on the part of the corporate innovation program have an upper hand? Uh, I want to ask that, but because Mark said it's not only about the money. It's not only about the money. Here, I saw Mas Albert actually taking the notes, very, very, very taking the note when, when Mark said that, right? It's make my curious. Uh, uh, how, what do you think? Do, 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 do Telecom Cell in, in this thing is the INC and then uh, TMI, you know? Uh, are you guys, what is actually do you want to have from the startup? Is it only the startup to get the money? Is it or how you actually bring up that, hey, startup, it's not all about the money, but it's about everything, right? What do you do? And then what, what do you actually do by uh, personally, right? By, by the, as the leader, what did you do to deliver this to the startup, Andy? So I think Mark has an excellent answer previously. So basically, um, I think what it requires is actually the right attitude and to earn the respect right i mean mm. as, as, i mean I'm, I'm putting myself as from startup point of view i mean no need to be in barrier um, um uh, uh, believe in yourself that the corporate needs you as well but of course um on the other side no need to be arrogant as well i mean once you got the the, the funding from the big investor from the backup from accelerator investor from the big corporates i mean you need to be to, to be humble and to, to be hungry right and uh, to, to be able to have the right attitudes i would say it needs uh, you understand uh, your your mission your personal mission your business mission because that's uh, the reasons of existence product can come and go right i mean uh, we, we we sometimes you need to pivot and like uh, seno uh, mentioned right? sometimes even we have to terminate the product altogether it's not about the product at the end. It's about the 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 reason why you built that product, right? So I think I think that's 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 very important, because uh, uh, otherwise you are going to end up exactly like what Mark just uh, say for the especially for the 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 early, very early stage, nothing to lose kind of startups. What you are going to do is okay. I'm going to pitch to twenty accelerators, investors. I will have one proposal, copy to twenty, and send it uh, to this twenty companies for funding, right? It's yeah. it's not. And I mean, I, I don't say it's not going to work, but the chance to work is very slim. So you mm-hmm. need to understand yourself first, and then understand the 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 the, the partners that uh, you are going to reach out. Exactly like Mark says, right? Some company, I mean, if, sometimes you really uh, desperately need the, the 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 money, right? So so then maybe the financial kind of accelerator or investor is your 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 uh, go to uh, partners, right? I mean, nothing wrong with that. But when you go to the uh, corporate, you have to do the, your 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 research, right? I mean, telecom cell. I think what kind of assets that they have, like hmm. what just mentioned, right? Or if you reach out to other kind of uh, uh, accelerators, other uh, uh, corporate, actually, what 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 actually their their, their point pain point? When when they reach out to the uh, the, the 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 startup, they should have some 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 pain points like telecom cell. I think we want to move from the just providing connectivity to something. Uh, uh, more meaningful out of the assets that we have. Everybody says, I mean, I wish I have telecom sales asset, right? But what that what that, that means? I mean, we, we, I mean, from telecom sales, I mean, beyond connectivity, what is that, right? So we, we need the partners to to do that, right? So I think if you can customize your 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 proposal, sort of say, I mean, just uh, to to uh, to to 
to uh, to to really show what your 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 personal values your your business values and reach out to the right partners that can really complement your 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 needs that will be very ideal so yeah that's my opinion. okay yeah. okay um okay this is make me think actually uh but please if i'm wrong please do correct me okay everyone in the panelists in the end, right, even though either though is a corporate or non-corporate or any incubator or accelerator or, or the th a, a site like NUS as a university, as a neutral site, right, I saw that in the end, it's actually is not about how the startups get the funding or get the, all the support from the, the, the corporates uh, or the corporates needs the startup to make the good product or new innovation. But in the end, it has to have a great an honored uh, collaboration with a, dig a great dignity uh, to, to achieve a, a, a great future in the head, right? Please say, if I'm wrong, please correct me. But what I got from Mark, from Pa Andy, Maseno, and then in, in the end also Albert, it, in the end, it's this corporate innovation and key incubator or accelerator or any of a program that uh, incub uh, corporate have in that deliver with uh, like collaboration in NUS. In the end, it needs to have a great dignity and uh, an honor dignity to do a great collaboration, right? So it backs to us, like the mindset of the people, right? Uh, cannot be, uh, you know, cannot be so big headed, needs to be really humble, uh, join, to, to join together. It's not only about the money, right? Wow. Okay, viewers, ladies and gentlemen, if you watch this panel session, even for me, it's a really great session. Um, I'm, I'm really honored because, you know, I, I am in the part of this ecosystem, right? But, and I also feel you guys that there's a, a lot of uh, challenges to deliver that, actually. So delivering to, 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 to the, the startup at the corporate event that you guys need to understand, this is not only about businesses, but it's about how to get a great achievement and great dignity in the future, right? Wow. All right. Uh, let's continue. I cannot stay away from you. So I know all the panels. I'm really sorry, but really great for me. Uh, but again, I really want to ask from uh, in this one before we head it to the bit, the last question. I cannot feel it. it's already almost an. I think it's already eleven. But I want to ask this first to Albert. Bert, uh, can you share it to us? Uh, in the end, uh, what is actually the advantages and the challenges uh, for joining of the incub uh, uh, corporate incubators like the PIMC? Maybe you can share some tips for the other founders that may want to join uh, probably the PIMC future program. Okay, I think uh, everybody that listen or see this already actually see one of the main advantages joining the corporate uh, incubation, which is what Jasper Andy said. That kind of the thing that we want to have as a startup because Pa Andy has all the um, experiences already been there before us and then he just gave me like I wrote uh, extensive notes in here so what should we do what can we do in the future that kind of the main advantages we see when you join somebody that actually more ex has more experience than you like those kind of uh, experience that you can apply on your company and also there are another additional advantages like i said earlier just that kind of the funding funding is somehow one of the least on my top priorities because uh, and uh, when we talk about our business process we more uh, we want to see like this is as a win-win solution like earlier so we want to also strengthening what telkom cell has when telecom cell go beyond the telecommunication and then we will see what can we do for them as well because they help us with some kind of uh, with a lot of things and as you know i mean if you join the and say in here pak seno is actually i have a seno whatsapp personal number i think i can just ask him anything any time so it is that easy to get to have some uh, input from a corporate uh, point of view what should we do uh, of course, there are some challenges in this case, like uh, there are always a different of value. You, can, you cannot expect a, a corporation to meet the same value like for, let's say, 26, uh, uh, 26 startup until now, right, Pak Seno? They will have a lot of differences in that kind of value. But again, I told you earlier, this is about the business. It is about the business deal as well. 
So you need also to be flexible. You need also to accommodate each other. And until now, my experience with TNC is uh, they are respecting us what with what we have here, what we are fighting for, and we also respect. Uh, the ENC or Telkomsel in the greater view, what they want and what they seek in the futures. So we can, like I said earlier as well, we can strengthening each other. Telkomsel can go beyond communication. The startup can uh, can grow larger as well. And I think that's the, the the main disadvantages for now. Like how to always be on the side of we uh, open minded and to synergize to collaborate with each other. Always, there are always some um, things that why they don't do it like this, why then they do it like this, and it happened in both ways, right? Mm. That's why. Uh, but again, in in this kind of corporate, because in the future, I think uh, what we have don't have or what the product we have that being uh, being done with Telkom Cell, we also somehow become product of Telkom Cell, like represent their name. Um, I think uh, their input is always valuable. How can we? actually make it happen and uh, the corporate in this case have more uh, have greater responsibility to also uh, see it happen because let's say it happened but it does not really represent the telecom cell uh, value then mm. people will it, it it can also damage the telecom cell brand right yeah so that's why they also will i mean in this case i believe they will also um try it as at the best as they could to make sure that this product will also have the same quality content uh, with the other telecom cell product. That's why I'm. I think uh, these these advantages can also be advantages in some manners. That's All it. Right. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Albert, for your sharing and for your tips. Uh, founders, the others, please do take notes. That's the great uh, insight from Albert as the one of our portfolios also in, in TINC. Okay, uh, before I go to Pa Andy and Mark, uh, Maseno, uh, maybe this one is the last uh, question that I'll be asked to you. Mas, uh, from the TINC program, uh, I want to know what is actually uh, over into the future, what the INC will do, and actually what types of the uh, startups that you are actually being keen on to find into the future, and probably that you can share it a bit of your uh, the programs and also what is the things that you act, uh, uh, you hope for to the future for the INC and also the startups that actually right now watching us in this session. Sure. Okay. Thanks, uh, Masiki. So um, I guess like any other. Uh, startup incubators and accelerators in general, uh, we usually look on early stage startups, uh, mm -hmm. mostly. And uh, usually that means the ones that are still in the MVP stage or are in the seed stage, right? And in uh, Think, uh, we have two streams actually. We have the incubation streams, which is focusing on more on the product development, on the innovations. And then we have the uh, acceleration stream where we are focusing more on the market development or scaling up the business. So uh, uh, the Think program itself has uh, has um, evolved along the, the past three years uh, into what we are now. Uh, we are currently focusing more on startups that are uh, more in, uh, on the acceleration stage. However, uh, uh, when we look at startups, uh, uh, we also, if there's a, a good chance for startups that are still in the incubation stage that are, are have good opportunities for us to collaborate, we, we also open uh, our program uh, to them. Beehive Drones here is one example. And uh, when we look at startups, there are a lot of things that, that we look right. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll start with the general ones. For example, like mm -hmm. we look at the market uh, desirability is is the market attractive enough and scalable enough for telecom cell in this case because we are a corporate accelerator program in the end is and then we look at the uh, product feasibility uh, meaning that is the product itself is something that is can be built in a relatively shorter term uh, instead of a longer term like there are a lot of uh, new digital technologies that will take a long time to develop especially when we look at those advanced uh, technologies in, in medical tech or health tech right uh, but 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 it's not about the vertical itself. It's not about health tech or meditech. It's about uh, whether the product itself is something that's feasible to be built, uh, and, and then relatively shorter term. And if it's something that is, uh, you know, the ecosystem is ready, the barrier entry is 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 uh, relatively lower, 
it has some you know synergistic alignment with telkom cell strategic initiative in the digital uh, business and also in, in for us to becoming a digital uh, telco we look at the team uh, of course uh, the team capability the founders capability their experience their background um, and of course uh, in the end we look at the business uh, viability as, uh, uh, also we look at the you know we look at the financial metrics uh, the projections uh, whether it's it's something that is you know it's uh, uh, again attractive enough or suitable enough for uh, Telkom Cell to uh, go uh, together with the startup, uh, we want to we the way we approach the startup is that we we collaborate with them, right? We don't. Candy uh, mentioned earlier uh, about the vendor client uh, 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 model partnership, right? Uh, but we don't we don't treat our startups like that. We treat our startups like uh, strategic partners. So uh, we want to uh, co-create together. We want to co-innovate together. Uh, that's why we, we, we when when we, they build the the product, uh, we don't really direct them uh, on, on like, not not like a vendor client uh, relationship. Mm. We don't direct them on on the, the initiative, but uh, we but we are still involved in the process. So our team, Pak Andi also mentioned earlier, we have project buddies. Uh, that's one of the key differentiators as well. Uh, our project buddies involve. Uh, with the startups teams, with the uh, founders, and also the team, uh, uh, to help them uh, build and and uh, you know uh, go through the exploration and discovery process uh, of the startups. So uh, I think uh, lastly, uh, uh, I guess about the, the the verticals or the use cases. Um, uh, in the first three batches, uh, we were focusing a lot on IoT use cases. Uh, mm -hmm. Why IoT use cases? Uh, it's because we see and we believe that IoT is the most, you know, relevant digital use cases for uh, a telco company like Telkom Cell. Uh, you know, being being a connectivity and a network uh, based uh, company, mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, and therefore in the first three batches we were focusing on use cases such as uh, smart city, smart environments, and then in the third uh, in the second uh, cohort we were doing agri tech IoT, and then in the third uh, cohort we were doing the industrial IoT use cases. But after three cohorts, uh, we we think that uh, uh, there are some lessons learned about IoT, right? We learned that IoT is a very long tail business, but it's still we believe that it's going to be big in Indonesia, uh, in Indonesian market, uh, and but but we already represent like the main you know the main use cases that I mentioned earlier about IoT uh, for especially for Indonesian market. So therefore, uh, starting the fourth cohort, which is uh, earlier this year, uh, and the fifth cohort. Uh, we go beyond IoT. Uh, we look into uh, use cases, new ca use cases, and then we onboard some of them, like uh, uh, use cases in medical tech, in uh, uh, edutech, even in edutainment. Uh, we have some uh, a use case in fintech, in uh, logistic and supply chain, and uh, also for the market. Uh, it's not always for B two C, but we also look at for the uh, SME, SMBs. The enterprise SaaS and platform as a service as well, uh, and other other kind of things. So, so I think uh, we'll see what's what's going to be next for Think. But but we aspire to be one of the biggest uh, uh, corporate accelerator uh, that can help uh, not just uh, for Telkom Cell, but help build the ecosystem and help uh, build the startup uh, uh, not just in uh, Jakarta, outside of Jakarta, outside of Java, in Indonesia in general. Thanks. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Masano. It will be great. Uh, the cohort six will be start as soon as possible, right? If I'm not wrong, right? Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, so for the latest, uh, Pa Andi and Mark, uh, this it will be the closing statement and also my last question to you guys. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not, uh, I know there's uh, several questions actually in the pigeonhole from the viewers, but uh, even in this conversation, uh, this is not finished yet, right? Actually, for this panel session, but I need to end it this one. So, Pa Andi, uh, I really want to know, and I think the viewers also want to know, what is the big goals from you as someone that from the corporates and making deliver of the program of the corporate incubators? Uh, I really want to know what is the big goals from you. And also, Mark, I want to have your insight as from the education people side, right from NUS with the programs of uh, corporates and everyone, what things that maybe can give um, insight for Pa Andi or also Pa Albert, Set Maseno, and also probably for the other startup that outside here that are watching this session. Okay, so I think Pa Andi first, and then we continue with you, Mark. Okay, Pa Andi, please. 
Oke okay, Mas Iki. So I think I mean just to reflect ya. Telkomsel yeah. basically start as a startup as well. 25 years uh, years ago we feel like we are a startup as well. And then the, the business growth uh, fortunately with a, a lot of uh, partners that help us. Um, yeah, I mean we get revenue, net income here and there, but I think there are things that money can buy, right? Things like when we open up the infrastructure telco to the smaller village in Indonesia and when i see uh, there's a mother crying in indul fitri because now he can connect to his daughter that live in taiwan in uh, uh, saudi arabia stki right i think that kind of experience is really the, the something money can buy when we collaborate with a, a partner like gojek for example to give uh, uh, the opportunities that you cannot imagine combination with, with within connectivity and the services so now the gojek drivers can Can, can can receive orders, can reach out to the, the 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 supply and demand much better. I mean, the sparkle in their eyes when they uh, receive the order, that's money can buy, right? So mm. I think I want to uh, repeat that experience while working with the startups uh, like Marxi. I mean, used to be the the model is like R and D, we spend money and then uh, like fire and forget, right? It is 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 the resource is become a more limited. The opportunities uh, is is wide open there, right? So like what uh, Seno said, we want to co-create, we want to co-innovate to find and to repeat that experience that I, I have, right? I really want to have that. But um, toward that, we need discipline, like you know, uh, Seno said, mm. right? I mean, we cannot just, uh, um, we can uh, as much as we want, but the, the resource, not only the money, but also the time and the, 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 the attention that we can give is uh, 26, even out of the 26, maybe we have to screen it right because in every stage we have to be disciplined because uh, it, it, it's no hard feeling it's professional yeah it's we want to allocate more resource to the highest possible or or the most obvious uh, collaboration that probably work right i mean then in the earlier stage in the area that we feel that probably is not going to work or or need to pivot etc i think we have to To, to 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 pivot or even if if even stop right i think i think i think that's the 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 obvious uh, stages that we have to feel i mean company a big company like 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 telkom cell is uh, just for your information it's not get used to kill product right i mean big company like, i mean this this is like five ten uh, years product that's already there with us is emotionally we born to that product right i mean but now the The, the the stage uh, to develop product and the the, the cycle is uh, become short and shorter so i think we have to realize that and and uh, yeah be disciplined but i think that's the, the the big vision i think i want to create another uh, uh, sparkle in the our consumer eyes with the, our co uh, innovation and co collaboration that's my wow opinion. wow thank you very much pa andy mark what do you say for the ending of this session Okay, uh, well, uh, not too sure what should be the right thing to say, but uh, perhaps um, if, I have to, if, if I'm been put in the position to give advice to both uh, uh, corporate and startup, I guess uh, from this morning um, discussion, we should uh, at least walk away with one thing. I think the most valuable thing for, co um, um, for corporates and, and startup working together uh, is the quality of the partnership, uh, way above money or, or way above other things. Yeah. It's the quality of that partnership. And when we talk about quality, then we need to be conscious uh, and also honest about a question. What value do we add to each other? Yeah? So, so what value do the corporate add to the startup? And so, so do the startup. What value do you add, contribute to the corporates? Now, uh, in that regards, I think uh, in general, uh, in the kind of partnership, uh, corporate and startup partnership, I think the corporate need to recognize uh, uh, you have a bigger leadership role to play. Yeah, uh, because you you have the market, you you are big, you have the you have the resources and so forth. You have a bigger uh, leadership role to play, and and I think you should uh, the corporate should play that role well. Meaning, uh, you should uh, take care of the startup, uh, know their needs, and then uh, um, uh, help them to grow. Yeah, so it, it's not just uh, taking care of the about what the corporate can get out of the startup, but be sincere about this relationship and 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 seriously look at what value you can uh, how you can have the startup to grow. And for the startup, uh, uh, I would like to suggest, uh, choose your partner. Uh, uh, you, you know upfront, uh, you know upfront, divorce is very painful, yeah. So the only way to avoid divorce 
is to carefully choose your, your partner, yeah, your, carefully choose your spouse, so to say. Yeah, so at the point where, where you are so, uh, so in need of uh, so-called help and resource and so forth, uh, be conscious of the decision. Uh, let's not be too overwhelmed by the short-term needs, but rather be uh, look at the pain that you come that come by. Also, if you choose a wrong partner, yeah. So uh, perhaps uh, that, that's all I have to say. And uh, for that, uh, a good and healthy relationship, I think both parties will grow well and and become um, a, a good partner. And word was spread and, and people, people, other people will want to join uh, that kind of uh, so-called ecosystem of partnership. Yeah. Right. All right. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you very much, Pa Andy, Maseno, and also Albert. Uh, the end of from Mark, I think it's a wrap it up all this conclusion of our session today. It's been an honor, again, again, it's been an honor for me to be the moderator of this panel session, to have this great conversation and to seek that in the future, it's not, it's it's all about us. It's all about the every person, every personals that actually want to join, either though in the corporate uh, programs or not corporate programs, but in the end, to seek of the greater and brighter future in a good dignity and a great value. That's very important for all of us. Thank you very much again. It will, it's, it's, it's really been an honor for me. And I hope I can see you again in the future as soon as possible. And hopefully can meet in the physically, not being in the screen. Uh, and hopefully we can meet again over another program over in the future with the INC and Block 71. Mark, thank you very much. Pa Andy, Maseno, Albert, thank you very much. Okay, you. we'll end this session with a video again from TINC. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Risky and I'm ending of this session. Thank you very much. Hai para Innovators Indonesia Sebelum kita beranjak lebih jauh Apa sih harapan terbesar agar inovasi kalian dapat terakselerasi di market? Support akses ke market? Sales channel? Fasilitas pendukung inkubasi? Seperti lab, cloud server, dan perangkat? Apakah kalian salah satu dari para innovator yang memiliki harapan tersebut? Introducing Telkomsel Innovation Center Incubation dan acceleration program dari Telkomsel di mana Ting memberikan pembinaan, fasilitas inkubasi, dan akselerasi untuk solusi-solusi digital seperti Internet of Things, Artificial Intelligence, Machine Learning, Medical Technology, 5G Technology, dan berbagai solusi lainnya. Ting mengumpulkan dan mengakomodasi inovasi melalui kolaborasi dengan inovator lokal untuk bersama dengan kami menciptakan solusi inovatif yang siap untuk maju komersial ke market retail dan bisnis. Ting berkolaborasi dengan para startup dengan tim yang solid dan berpengalaman. Mulai dari tahap early stage hingga kalian yang sedang dalam tahap akselerasi. Lalu tahapan apa saja sih yang ada di dalam program Ting? Ada dua tahapan innovation journey dalam program Ting, yaitu incubation dan acceleration. Yang perlu diketahui, Ting akan mengkaji tingkatan maturitas solusi kamu. Apakah mulai dari incubation stage atau langsung ke tahap akselerasi? Pada setiap tahapan ini, teman inovator akan diberikan pembekalan mentorship dan monthly bootcamp dengan materi yang siap membantu kamu untuk melalui proses yang dilewati. Jika tim kamu memulai journey di tahap inkubasi, maka tahapan pertama adalah prototyping. Setelah itu, para inovator siap masuk ke tahap proof of concept. Setelah lolos di tahap inkubasi, waktunya kamu melesat ke akselerasi. Dimulai dari tahap piloting. Dan setelah masa piloting selesai, inilah saat yang dinanti-nanti untuk bisa ready for commercial. Penasaran apa saja sih perbedaan value berkolaborasi dengan Ting yang tentunya kesempatan ini nggak akan mungkin dilewatkan. Ting memberikan value general seperti bootcamp dan workshop, pendanaan, co-working space, mentor bisnis dan technical, akses investor. Hanya itu saja, tentu tidak. Ini saatnya kamu tahu keunikan dari program Ting. Market akses ke lebih dari jutaan pelanggan retail dan ribuan pelanggan corporate Telkomsel. Sales channel yang siap mensupport solusi untuk dikenal ke market dan yang gak kalah keren, Innovation Lab. Seperti Testing Lab, Sandboxing Platform, dan Development Kits yang siap membantu kalian pada proses inkubasi. 
bagaimana? Semakin siap berkolaborasi bersama kami? Hingga saat ini, Think sudah menghasilkan inovasi di berbagai bidang seperti Smart Environment, Agritech, dan Smart Industrial, dan berbagai area lainnya. Dan Ting akan terus memperluas garapan solusinya ke berbagai area digital solution lainnya. So, tunggu apa lagi? Ayo gabung bersama Ting untuk jadi bagian dari perjalanan inovasi dan akselerasikan solusimu lebih besar lagi bersama Telkomsel. Ayo daftarkan solusi kerenmu di ting.id. Dan jangan lupa follow untuk pantau update kami di sosial media. Telkomsel Innovation Center This morning, panelists. All right, thank you very much to all the panelists for the great session. I'm very happy to moderate it. And of course, before I end this morning panel session, let me remind you to all the participants of InnoX Jogja, please to check out the InnoX Jogja platforms. You can check out the virtual booth, have a networking with all the participants, such as like uh, startups, incubators, VCs, and corporates. Of course, you can also reach out to TINC in that platforms. And don't forget to follow our Instagram at InnoX Jogja, E W N O X J. O G J A for all information about at this event and thank you very much for attending the panel session. I'll see you again over for the next panel session. We will have the gaming in Indonesia with moderator Danang Jufri, the hub manager of Innovation Factory, and then Diko Julian, the manager games and new digital brand and communication at Dunia Games Telkom Cell, and also Desmond Tan, the chief of business and development officer at Bounty. Of course, and the last and not least with Jason Ong, the general manager of Akagi Games. So, thank you very much. I'll signing out and I'll see you at two o'clock. See you again. Goodbye.